Hi, I'm Bob German. In this video, I'll show you how to make a configurable tab for Microsoft Teams. This video has an accompanying hands-on lab at aka.ms slash appcamp. In this lab, you'll learn how to build a configurable tab, which can be used in Microsoft Teams channels, chat conversations, and meeting apps. Teams App Camp is structured as a set of labs that build on one another. You'll need to start by completing the Core Teams application, which is a personal tab in Microsoft Teams that uses Azure AD Single Sign-On for authentication. If you've completed Lab A-03, the Core Teams application, you can proceed to this lab, where you'll bring the Northwind Orders application into Teams channels. When you've completed the lab, you can continue to the Configurable tab in Meetings lab if you want to see how to make this useful in Meetings. There are two types of tabs in Microsoft Teams applications, Personal and Configurable. In the Core application, you built a Personal tab. As you may recall, this application included two tabs, which were defined in the App Manifest along with the URL of the underlying web page for each tab. That's why they're sometimes called static tabs, because the URL for each tab is statically defined right in the App Manifest. These tabs always run in the context of a personal application, that is, a Teams app that a user runs from the left sidebar. In this lab, you'll build a configurable tab. These tabs are more flexible. Instead of a static URL, the manifest will contain the URL of a configuration page, which will be displayed when a user adds your tab to a Teams channel, chat, or meeting. This allows more information to be passed to the tab so that it knows what to show. Now these Teams configuration pages can be used in a few different places. The most common area is in tabs that are used in channels, group chats, and meetings, but they can also serve as settings pages for message extensions and as configuration pages for connectors. In all three cases, we're capturing some information from the user and allowing Teams to run our page so we can save that away and remember what to show users later on. So suppose instead of just working with the Northwind Orders app directly in Teams, I'm actually collaborating with some other people from Northwind uh, who manage the beverages category of products. So I want my teammates to check the stock levels. And the app is right here in Teams, right? So they just have to click here, and then they have to go click into the app, and then they have to click Products, and then they can select beverages, and then they can check their stock levels. And then they need to remember how to get back when they're done. So while a personal app was a good choice for showing a user his or her own orders, because that's personal information, it doesn't really help streamline operations when you're collaborating. It might be just as easy to alt tab to a separate application. So let's see what we can do now with a configurable tab. I can come in here and essentially do the navigation once for my whole team. I'm gonna come in here to the plus sign, add the tab for Northwind Orders, and I get to configure the tab to show a specific product category. So I'll choose Beverages, and then I'll post to the channel about the tab, and this will bring a Beverages tab into my team. So now instead of navigating all the way over to another application and then finding the information again inside of that application, all they have to do is click beverages. That easy. And that easy to get back to the conversation. In fact, you can even click the little chat button here and discuss while you're actually using the application. So, that's what's possible with a configurable tab. So to make this work, what we had to do was to create a configuration page and then tell Teams about it. Uh, and you can see that on line 28 of the manifest where we're passing in a configuration URL. So let's take a look at the page, which the uh, lab instructions will guide you through creating. 
and take a look at the code so you can understand what's going on. Uh, the HTML is really simple. It's just the select box, the drop down with a list of categories. Um, it didn't even have the save button on it. If we go back to the uh, configuration page, you can see here that it's just an iframe and your configuration page is in the middle, but Teams controls the top and the bottom of the apparent dialog box that's there. And you're going to use the SDK to handle that save button and complete the configuration process. If we look at the JavaScript, I'm going to scroll down a little bit and um, and just show the part where we're talking to the Teams SDK. First thing we're going to do is initialize the SDK, and then we're going to register an on save handler. So Teams will show the save button. When somebody clicks it, this handler, this event handler is going to run. And what it's going to do is it's going to create a little data structure with a display name, an entity ID, the entity ID uniquely identifies the tab, a content URL, which is the URL of the page to view the tab, and the website URL, which in this case is the same, which is the URL of a page to display if for some reason Teams can't render the tab inside of the Teams UI and it has to pop up a separate web browser. So there's that option of having two different URLs. Now there's a couple of things you could do here based on how the user has configured the page, right? What, which category they've chosen. Um, we can actually pass in uh, information by storing it in the entity ID, or we can pass query string information in to the content URL and website URL to select what we're going to show on the page. Then we're going to populate the dropdown. Right. And when they select one of the options, we're going to um, call the set validity state function, which is going to enable the save button. And then when I click the save button, it's going to run that event handler, which will create the tab by doing set settings and then notify success, which will dismiss the pop up. Thanks for watching this app camp briefing. Once you have the lab working, you can proceed to the configurable tab in meetings lab, where you'll learn to build a tab that works in meetings, not only before and after the meeting, but also during the meeting with a shared stage view of the app. Have fun and smooth sailing as you complete the labs.